Today I'm setting out my priorities for building a safer, stronger Scotland. In order to achieve this, we need to deal not only with the immediate crime itself, but also the underlying factors that so often contribute to it. Drugs, drink and deprivation. Individuals must take personal responsibility for their actions and the consequences, while government and agencies must accept their responsibility for all of our communities. We need to promote good behaviour as well as punish bad. We will detain the dangerous but treat the troubled. We will come down hard on serious and dangerous offenders. But at the same time, we need to deal with the underlying social and economic problems that lead to a lack of self-esteem and a sense of hopelessness and despair. Tackling the fear of crime and deterring criminals requires effective frontline policing. A visible police presence detects crime and reassures communities. We are committed to delivering additional policing capacity in Scotland the equivalent of an extra thousand police officers into our communities. Another priority is toughening up on our approach on underage drinking that feeds youth disorder. Licensees already have a clear obligation to comply with the law and take all reasonable precautions to avoid illegal sales. We expect them to comply. I will soon be meeting the police and local authorities as part of the implementation of new licensing laws and I am also determined to crack down on irresponsible promotions and discounts of alcohol. Knife crime will be severely punished, but it's not enough simply to hammer down harder on the end results of knife crime. We also need to tackle the culture of knife carrying. For too many young people, knives are being seen as fashion accessories, not the lethal killers that they are. We need to find out what might make these young people think twice. That's why I'm commissioning our researchers to find out. I'm also determined to pursue organised crime with vigour. On supply, we will be absolutely uncompromising in going after those who peddle drugs. But as well as tackling supply, we must also address demand. Drugs are the great social challenge of our age. We must stop the situation where young people, because of low self-esteem and lack of opportunity, aspire to be a drug dealer. We have to create positive alternatives for them. I firmly believe prison should only be for those offenders who really need to be there, serious and dangerous offenders, so we need to shift the balance with tougher community punishments, which will protect the public, help offenders turn their lives around and involve some form of payback to communities for the harm they have suffered. Young people often complain that there isn't enough to do and nowhere for them to go. I have a great deal of sympathy for that. I'm delighted to announce that thanks to increasing amounts of money being confiscated from criminals through the Proceeds of Crime Act, we will establish a new approach to reinvesting that money to benefit Scotland's communities and especially those hardest hit by crime. By this autumn, we'll have around £8 million to reinvest in services and activities, which can make a real difference to young people's lives. A safe, strong community isn't just one safe from crime and free from antisocial behaviour. It's also one with a good physical environment, with access to high quality services and amenities. One where crime prevention is designed in from the very first plans. Above all, one built not just on rights, but responsibilities. Responsibility by each individual for their actions and responsibility of our government for all our communities. Where that culture flourishes, we will support it. Where it is fading, we will rekindle it. And where it is undermined and abused, we will fight for it.